so part, I think this is part four, but anyway, um, so I studied with the Bethelite sister. She was awesome. We actually got pretty close. I even got close to her husband too. They were really nice. Um, they used to drop me off from um, home after the meetings. Uh, we worked in field service together. Yeah, so we studied for about a year. And then I actually got baptized. Yep. So I couldn't believe the day had finally come. Because I was like, inside I was like, wow, I'm finally going to be official. So yeah. Um, yeah, even, you know, it was... Um, when the day came, um, I wasn't nervous until we started doing, until we went over the, um, baptism questions. And, um, like when I stood up, I was like legit shaking, but I got even more nervous. Like, okay, this is so annoying. I didn't think I would be so nervous, but... When it was time for me to go in the pool, that's when I got like, oh my God, why is like everybody and their mama like stopping here? But basically, <laughs> I'm walking from work right now, but basically when it was time for me to go in the pool, cause they, you know, basically they, they announced the congregations. So when it was my turn, um, I was literally shaking. Um, shaking but finally i win i you know i got baptized afterwards people congratulated me i felt like a celebrity for like five minutes so i know i'm just being honest that's how i felt moving on um just adjusting my bag okay so time goes on start going i i was already going out in field service but i started kind of like picking up my field service time and i don't know i just wanted I don't know, I just wanted to be like, just like a good example and stuff. And I just wanted to look like a good Christian and all that good stuff. So, and, and, and I know it sounds weird. It's like, oh, why do you want to look, why are you trying to impress people? I, I don't know. I just, I just kind of felt invisible in the congregation I was in. So I kind of just wanted to show like, hey, like I'm serious about Jehovah. Like I know I studied for years. Now, I mean, I wanted to show everybody in Jehovah that I'm serious. So, yeah, I mean, so, okay, so basically, my life basically consisted of working, going to the meetings, and field service. I literally didn't do anything else. Like, I didn't have a social life. Like, I didn't get invited anywhere. Like, when I, I mean, the only time I'd have, like, association is when, um, it was hospitality. Um... I, I don't know if they still do it. They probably do because they always like love to have an excuse to eat like most people. But hospitality is basically when, oh, you know what? You may not have hospitality. This is, oh, this is for people who live near the Bethel, live near Bethel. Hospitality. Oh, and if you have a talk, if the brother's giving a talk. So, yeah, you probably do hospitality. Um, I, I don't think I have to explain what it is, but I will anyway. If there's a speak, whenever there's a speaker on Sunday, a visiting speaker, um, one of the field service groups, I guess it's so weird talking about this, but one of the field service groups are assigned to accommodate the brother and his wife if he's married by giving him lunch. Sometimes that could be a cooked meal. Sometimes the field service group just gives like a gift card. It all depends. But anyway, that was the only time I would get association. And I don't know, it sucked because I started thinking like, oh, you know, what's wrong with me? And ultimately, <laughs> I just don't think I fit in. Like I, I was, I try to be low key, but I'm just, I'm just me. Like I love, Je I love Jehovah, I love Jehovah and I still love Jehovah. And I was just being me. Um, but anyway, um, I eventually, okay, my, my Bible teacher, she ended up, um, she ended up not, basically she ended up leaving her congregation. Um, it's because she, the commute 
was a bit too much for her. So she was driving, her and her husband were driving um, like three times a week to Connecticut from um, New York because they lived in Patterson. If you're familiar, I know any witness is familiar with the Patterson Bethel um, you know, facility. They lived in Patterson, I live in Connecticut. So because the congregation was in Connecticut, they had to travel every time they need to go to the meeting. So it got to be too much for them. I'll be real with you. I don't know the real reason. That's the reason she gave me, but it's, I don't know, whatever. They had been in the congregation for years. So I guess it got to be too tiring for them. Um, I'll own it though. That is like a really like, ugh, not a fun commute, especially after like the, the midweek meeting at the end of the midweek meeting. Oh my goodness. That's, you'd probably, they'd probably get home at like 1030 or something after working all day. Cause you know how they work those Bethel lights. Anyway, she left the congregation. I was sad about it, but I ended up visiting her later in Bethel to say hello and stuff. And we kept in contact on like here and there. Um, and then I ended up moving to another congregation because I was just so unhappy there. So I ended up moving to a congregation in another town, the town nearby, because it actually was like near my house because I live near, I live right near another town. So it wasn't really a big deal. But anyway, um, oh my goodness, at that congregation, it was smaller, it was less diverse, like, and it's like, I don't really care about that stuff, because, but it's just, I don't know, it was, I don't know, man. Okay, I came from a congregation where it was, like, mostly black people. This one was mostly white, which I knew that, and I didn't care. I don't care about that stuff, especially when it comes to, like, you know, worship. But, um, very different vibe. But there, I found over time, like I was going out in field service, trying to get to know different people. But honestly, I just found the young people there to be really stuck up. Like, I don't know if they thought I was an alien, but they treated me like I was one. Like, there was only like one, there, yeah, there was only like a, a, a like two young people that were like actually nice to me. Um, everyone else, they just didn't speak to me. Um, it was really weird. Like, I, I don't get it. <laughs> and I, like, tried to kiss ass and stuff, but it, it didn't work. Like, I could tell it started working on one person, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. Ugh. I don't know why I'm crossing the street. Oh my god, this person just ran over the pedestrian sign. That's bizarre. Okay. Um, moving forward. There was a sister in the congregation who was so mean to me. I would say hello to her. She was an older woman too. That's why older white woman, but I don't think it was a race thing. Cause like, who knows? But like her, one of her like closest friends was black. So I knew it wasn't that, but um, I figured it wasn't, but that woman did not like me. I would say hello to her and she would literally just pass by me every time. And I don't know, one day, I, oh yeah, even better. A sister was going out of town, like her, her sister and her husband. Let me see what time it is. Cause this, okay. Sorry, my arm's hurting. Okay, so this, my video is about to cut off, my bad. But basically a sister was about to go out of town. Um, for She was about to move across the country. And so the mean sister, was one of the party organizers, right? Tell me why she gave invitations to everyone but me. <laughs> Dead serious. And at that point, I was just like, okay, like, I know I haven't been here long. Like, at that point, I had been there for like a month, but I'm a part of the congregation. Like, why are you excluding me? At that point, I was like, I was just like really fed up with her. And at that point, I stopped saying hi. I would just smile because I'm like the nice person that I am. I would smile at her 
and keep it trucking. I didn't even bother like wasting my words anymore. But um, yeah, that was my first, that was the first like strike for me. Cause it, it just was ridiculous. But the second strike was, I realized like I moved from the same situation. Like I literally moved from like one lonely hunger one lonely situation to another like i left the other other congregation because i was being treated like i didn't exist and didn't matter and i was being treated like that here so i was just like you know what like there was one day i can't i think my last meeting ever i think it was a midweek meeting um i remember one day i went to the meeting and as usual, I, I used to have such high anxiety when I went there. Um, I remember one day I left, and when I, well, I used to take the bus there and take it back, I remember one time I just was like, you know what? I said, I, I just feel so uncomfortable. And I just remember just feeling so uncomfortable and just wondering why. 